Hi, I'm Jeff Royer. I'm going to show you how to make a forge out of a turkey fryer. Right here, right now. Let's go. We got this thing out of the shop, uh, out of the storage actually, cobwebs and all. Uh, I got this a yard sale for five bucks. We're going to, I don't know if it works. Let's plug it in and see if it works. All right, what's going on? That's a good sign. Uh, I'm going to grab some Windex here. It's my go-to propane leaker checker. You see the bubbles right there yonder. There's no regulator on this. That's not a regulated. That could be a problem. In fact, that, it's got to be adjustable. That one won't work. Just for fun to see if it does work. Woo! It's working. It's working! It's working! But we need to be able to adjust the flame. That regulator is not going to get us where we want to go. Well, that's not going to get hot enough. I'm putting a regulator on. The regulator on. We gotta have a uh, adjustable regulator. This turkey fryer does not happen to have one on it. Plan B, I got another turkey fryer that we're gonna try to use. Step. It's got a regulator on it too, which you gotta have. Alright, we'll get that little bad boy tightened up. Lefty, tidy, righty, loosey on propane. You gotta turn it the opposite direction, tighten her up. Turn that on, get our lighter ready. That bad boy works. He is. Lots of flame on this one. That's what we're looking for. Lots of gray there with lots of flame. All right, now we got to configure the forge. We need the burner towards the back of the middle. Set that. We're just going to stack stuff up loose to see how it starts to go. We're not going to use these, but just to hold stuff in place. We're going to use uh, other blocks to uh, actually build the forge out of, but this is just going to help hold items in place for us. Like that could go up. Right there, that, that could be, be our sides right there. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be big. So make sure everything's just gently, slightly snug. And I gotta go inside. I actually bought some fire brick. Usually they're laying around. Your neighbor's got some fire brick laying around uh, from old uh, uh, wood burners. They got all kinds of uh, bricks in there you can use. You don't have to go buy them. You can scrounge them. It might take you a couple weeks to get them. Uh, I'm gonna go inside. I actually bought some. I've had them, piles of them over the years, but the last time we moved here, I got rid of a lot of that stuff. I'm gonna go inside and get them. Store bought fire brick. There's a. Uh, Six of them in there. We'll see if we can do it with six. That's pretty lean. We'll see if we can do it. Oh, coffee break. Coffee break over. These are fire brick. They're kind of light, so I like that. Light is good. Light means insulation. There's no science to this exactly how you want it. It's just kind of, hey, y'all watch this and try to make it work. So I got uh, fire brick on the side, and I got fire brick across the top. That was pretty quick to assemble. Uh, let me take another look, look at it here. I don't know if I like that yet. Uh, it'd be nice if I could get this brick behind the flame, because these stones, these stones are a lot better than having the uh, fire brick uh, than the concrete exposed. We got concrete on the bottom, but I'm not worried about that. It might bust and pop back here. It might, uh, it might possibly break because this is not a fire brick and it's wet. When it starts heating up, it's going on to pop. So before we get this thing lit up, we need to get some safety glasses on. You may be wondering why we're using fire brick instead of just regular rocks or bricks. You can use them, but uh, these are meant to have a lot more heat on them. Uh, the, the concrete blocks, landscaping blocks, are probably going to crack and bust up. These might as well, but they'll take a lot longer doing it. This is just the first forge. This is what we've done before. We, we had the full size two and a half inch by whatever they are, three, two, two and a half by three by eight inch blocks, bricks. We had those first. That's what we started with. A bunch of them stacked up with a turkey fryer. That's how we started. We have actually built probably eight, nine, maybe 10 different forges over the years. We got one now that's, that's rocking outside, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about just stuff sitting around the house, just so you go out there and start doing something. Let's just take these blocks off and light the fire. Now we got fire going already, I love that. We got flame going out the back a little bit. I don't care about that. We're gonna put a top on here. 
I want to start this kind of kind of low. We want stuff to heat up slowly. We don't want to, because it's been outside and frozen some of the stuff, so we just want it to warm up kind of slow. I had one stone left over, so I went ahead and lined right on top of that concrete with this. This is a concrete product, but it's got other stuff in it too. It's meant special for fireplaces. Well, you can read about yourself, fire brick. For fireplaces, for liners and fireplaces, so pretty good stuff. We're gonna hit it really hard. We're gonna put a lot more flame on it than a fireplace would. This is probably a fireplace times, probably times two. So we're gonna run through the ringer pretty good. Now we got some flame coming in there, but we need to hear a throaty, we want to hear a kind of rumble, a throaty rumble. Uh, we got some unburned fuel. The fuel's coming all the way out that's not burned. We want the fuel to burn inside the, inside the forge. I've got this uh, Venturi over here opened all the way up. This. Uh, this air damper, shut the air off, it blows more flame out, open that up all the way. We may end up putting a hair dryer on here for forced air. I don't think we're gonna get where we wanna go. See, we just got flames coming out. You don't hear it rumble or a throaty rumble or anything. That's what we wanna hear. It does a little rumble right there. Just, that's a little rumble, a little throaty. We need, we need more. I'm gonna go get a hair dryer and we'll see what that does for us. I'm not sure. Hear that sound? That throaty sound? Hear that rumble a little bit? That's what we want. We want that throaty, that, want that throaty sound. We want those flames to come out only because of experience with this other forge out here. I know that we want flames coming out several inches, just like what we got. Just if we put on high, get a little more. We want that to rumble. The more rumble, the better. I'm gonna secure this. I get it where I want it, and I want it to stay there, so I'll just rest it right up against that. The way it won't move. Pretty down and dirty, but that's how we started. What we got here is a chainsaw file, uh, 3 16 maybe. Let's stick it in there and see what happens. And let's take a piece of half inch rebar. It's gonna take a little while for that heat to come up on all these stones. See, I can actually still touch that now. It's been running for maybe five minutes. I can still touch that. But it's gonna, it's gonna hold the heat better and not deteriorate the stone so you can use this over and over again. As soon as those bricks, they'll be glowing after a while. It's maybe take 20 minutes for those bricks to glow. But they will start glowing, give enough time. And uh, something like this, you just can't get in a hurry because you're, you're running on a, you know, I got 20 bucks in the bricks, but you could have scrounged those. You can actually do all this for free. Just a little bit of time. Grab my gloves. You guys see in there all right? They were already making red. That's that's workable right there. That heat's gonna start moving out. We're just got heat right over the flame right now. But as soon as these stones warm up, they'll take a little bit to warm up. They start moving that heat out and the whole thing will start glowing in there. Pretty awesome. Now that, that rebar is gonna take quite a bit. Dull. It's a dull red. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really dull red. It will heat up. Now hair dryer is what's making it work. Sometimes this stuff will work without a blower. So is this a first floor tile made? This is really just like, in fact, this is a little more primitive than what we started with. Uh, the turkey fryer is the same, and we used, uh, we had forced air on. I can't remember what we used to have forced air. Some kind of little dinky blower. All right, this thing was laying out in the weeds. It's one of our first animals that we ever bought. Uh, it's Harbor Freight. I think we got into it for 30 some bucks, uh, probably 14 years ago. It hasn't rotted away yet. It's cast iron, so it's not very good quality anvil, but you can hammer on it. That's the idea. Don't go out and buy one, go borrow one from a neighbor. I built this anvil, Kyle and I built it. It was a counterweight. It weighs about 400 some pounds. We flame cut it with a torch. It was about uh, five inches wide. We uh, flame cut this. Kyle ground on it for a week or so. We filled the welds, the torch gouges with weld. Kyle ground on it some more. Put these ears on it. Put another solid piece across the top uh, to make it a little bit wider. So we'd have a nice wide surface across the top. But uh, this is several thousand dollars for this anvil if you could even find one. I don't know who makes a 400 pound anvil. We did. Just go out and borrow it. You know, I got a railroad iron over here. Here's a railroad iron. 
uh, sitting around the scrap yard and the neighbors got stuff sitting around. This is not the 90 pound rail, I think it's like a 60 pound rail, 60 pounds per foot, something like that. And I did a uh, flame cut that and put a nice little horn on there. You can hammer on that thing all day long. It ain't gonna care, it's gonna like it. It's gonna say, thank you, Matt, have some more, please. But this handle is the one we're gonna use. We haven't used it for years. We'll turn this file into a little snake. We'll stick it back in there and use it up. I'm gonna flatten the head out first. You got a bigger hammer. You don't have to have a big pair of fancy tongs. Use pliers. Hot enough to start working the pizza. Half inch uh, rebar. Okay, we got flames coming out about, I don't know, almost a foot. So I just want to crank it up and see how much heat we can get out of it. I grabbed some uh, tongs this time. I'm gonna make the tail, make the tail on that snake. It cools down fast a little metal bit. We got heat all the way through there now. The bricks are starting to get red on the side. I got that thing all the way out to the edge and we're getting heat all the way through there. Nice good heat all the way through. I'm gonna round that thing here pretty quick. It cools off pretty fast. Making that a point like it was earlier before we started. All right, I lost my heat. We're gonna let that tail stick up just a little bit. We're gonna start forming this thing right now, right here. Get a couple heats out of it. We got flames blowing out the side. Not really efficient, but I'm on a metal workbench. Can't do this on wood. That's some good heat going on. You gotta get an adjustable regulator. You gotta be able to move your uh, blower, hair dryer in and out a little bit. Get the right direction on the air. Some of that air is going up inside that venturi also. Y'all seen a snake laying around, haven't you? It's not a mystery what they look like. We're just trying to make this look like a snake donut. We're gonna try to get his head wrapped over on this side of his tail and get his tail kind of up in the air like he's uh, warning somebody. We want action. When you do this organic stuff, you want to show action with uh, nature and wildlife. Not just static, but you want to show some action. Idea. When you got your cords running, you want to shut your fuel off first. Don't shut off the blower. Shut the fuel off. Get rid of your fuel source. You want to let that cool down in a hurry, but you don't have to, but you run that hair dryer on it until it cools down. Got some pretty good heat on that. I mean, that's coming out, that heat's coming out a good 10 inches. So you could actually do a knife, build a knife in there with not too much difficulty. Could be used a little more heat, we're used to that with our big forge, but uh, for scrounging up stuff and building something from nothing, man, we got some really serious heat going on here. The hair dryer is what makes this come together too, and the regulator on the propane. We're gonna smash the snake. I don't like snakes, unless they're black snakes. I got a smushed snake. And that's how you make a turkey fryer and turn it into a forge. Hair dryer, propane, turkey fryer burner, and some brick. The brick you can scrounge doesn't cost much money at all. Basically, you can build this from nothing, just stuff laying around the house, or your neighbor's house, or your neighborhood, or the salvage yard. It's not that far away, they're just right around the corner. You remember how we did all this? It's not that difficult. You can do this 10 years old or older, uh, get some help from your parents, get your help from your neighbor, and if you're not careful, you will start to reveal the artist in you. And 
people are going to hang around you and they're going to think, well, if he did it, I can do it too. And you can. Poppy signing off. Now for this short message. Go borrow one from your neighbor. Go borrow one. Don't go out and buy one. And you need to borrow it. Go see if your neighbor's got one you can borrow. Let you borrow theirs. Uh, don't go out and buy one. Go borrow one from a neighbor. Go borrow one from your neighbors. If you're out in the neighborhood talking to your neighbors or something, just go out and borrow it. You know, steal it off their back porch. Or go steal your mom's out back on the porch. But create the relationship with your, uh, with your neighbors. It's important to have good neighbors anyway.